ref or the corner should have stopped him before that? That seemed like that was kind of... No. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, there comes, there comes a point. It's like, obviously that kid was missing some things that I'm sure they're going to think the next few months about. They're going to be like, you know, what tools did he need in that fight that he didn't have? A tighter guard for boxing, you know what I mean? And Mike, Mike was picking him apart the whole time. And that's one of those, he's too tough for his own good. But, you know, we're hard-headed dudes in MMA, and we got to learn the hard way. So now he's going to know some things about himself, about uh, what opponents might see in him and what they might want to do to him. And he's going to overcome that in his own different ways. That's a tough that's a tough kid. And so is Mike Davis. His opponent was tough too, you know. So, I mean, maybe he won't get so high, but I, that toughness sometimes is all you need. So, you know, good luck to that guy getting back to the drum board, figuring out what Mike did to him. And, you know, best of luck to Mikey in the next one, bro. Speaking of toughness, uh, you know, you showed off your last fight. How, how's the nose doing and everything right now? It's a little loud when I use it, but I don't really use it too often. I just hold my breath and then swing real hard, and they usually, you know, disperse. They either get out the way or, you know, they run real fast. So we'll see. Um, I'm good, though. I'm ready to fight. I've been training. I'm sparring, working, ready to fight anybody, anybody, anytime. I fight right now, tonight. Let's go. News kind of came out overnight that uh, Santiago Ponsonibio was out of the Robbie Lawler fight, and a lot of people in the responses were like, "What's Mike Perry doing? Is Mike Perry ready? Is that a fight you'd be interested in?" Absolutely, I wanted that three years ago, two and a half, something like that. So, um, if Robbie Lawler would, you know, grace uh, me with his name on a contract, you know. Let's go, bro. Let's put on a show. We're going to throw hands. Ain't going to be all that wrestling shit. I might mix it up on you. I might try to change levels, shoot a single leg, take you down, punch you a little bit, get you disoriented. and Or I might just hold tight and box. <clears throat> you know, but um, who am I? Who am I to be accepted uh, from a guy like that? So, you know, i just been calling him out. People call me out, and I... I you know, you just can't accept every fight offer. Everybody, I, I bet a lot of people in this arena would fight me today. They think they would have a chance, but, you know, I could probably fight 10 of them at one time. Let's, let's do it, though. Anytime, anybody, they already know. I've been the same since I got here. If, if they want to accept and sign the contract, and if I can benefit them, I do benefit Robbie, I think. I think people like me, you know, and I'm... Don't get me wrong, I'm a little baffled by that. I'd be like, oh man, you know, I didn't do so hot last time. Or, and, and I was watching a fight earlier and I thought, man, I wonder if this dude, it was the Italian dude versus Sanchez. It was early in the night and they're big guys, 85. And I thought, I feel like this fight looks like mine against Luque might have. And, um, and I felt like, what if Sanchez throws a jump knee in, in the third round and busts uh, the Italian's nose, and then they give him the decision? I, and the Italian won the decision, and his nose wasn't busted, though. So, you know, did they give Luque the decision if he didn't bust my nose? What reason did that happen? You know, I got to be even better. I got to be even cleaner. And the people liked it. Dana called me and was like, oh, it, sometimes it doesn't matter about judges or what I think. It's about what all of you have said on the Internet. So sometimes you're giving people wins. Maybe I didn't deserve it, but the world showed me love. And, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight my heart out next time, too. Put it all on the line. Ain't nobody going to stop me. Ain't nobody going to finish me. I ain't got no wood to knock on, but I ain't scared. Let's go. Nobody doing nothing. Sit right here. So you're clear to return whenever? I haven't spoke to doctors yet, like about it. I just been training, been working. One doctor, uh, actually, like right after, um, they checked me with the camera and stuff, and he was like, "Oh, you're still swollen," but that was like the week or two after, and um, he said uh, six weeks, and that was like, you know, it's been about eight or nine, I think, since the fight, and I've been back to work since like week three or four 
because I'm impatient. So, um, anytime, bro, like I said, I'm, I'm always working. And, you know, I was hung over this morning. And I felt this morning I was like, oh, man, I'm definitely not ready to fight today. Good thing I'm, I'm only watching. So, but if you sign, and, and I would take a short notice. No, I, I don't get lucky with those. Those don't pop up for me. Uh, big names don't usually lose fights, like like uh, lose opponents that week, because both guys getting paid, and they're like, okay, I got broken foot, but I'm still going to show up, and I'm going to try my best. I just won't kick. You know what I mean? I always show up. I'm always on weight. I'm the most professional guy in the business, probably. Maybe that's why I get the love, because I love fighting. It's who I am. It's, it's what I do. It's everything about me. I'm everything about it, and I'm with it. Let's get it. Would the Robbie Lawler fight be something that you would push, or you kind of just see the UFC? Absolutely. Show? I mean, I'm I'm the only guy who does push. I mean, there's a couple guys nowadays that they'll say some names. Dolby just called me out. Kudos to him. Darren Till did it while I was there, and that fight didn't happen. Now he's up at middleweight. That's too big for me. I'm not going up there. I got to cut weight. And um, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Just, Robbie, let's fucking go, bro. Let's show these people how to fight. And you've been slacking. And I'm unlucky in the way where I get the best versions of the best dudes. I get it out of them somehow. They, they know what's up when they fight me. And that's, that's what the fans know, too. They know I'm swinging for the fences. And if you swing for the fences, I'll eat it. No problem. Bowl of nails in the morning. <laughs> Catch some. Smoke. And uh, I'm just curious. I want to get your thoughts on uh, a big fight happening in, in your division. Masvidal taking on Nate Diaz for the BMF belt. Uh, you like that? You know, the, the, the BMF belt? I love belt it. I love it. I, I was like, man, this was the Mayweather-McGregor belt. That's what it is, the BMF belt. So... I uh, I called out Conor McGregor because he said something about what's that BMF um, interim shot coming up? What's the date? And I was like, well, there should be a platinum chin belt, and I'm holding it. Who can take it? Ain't nobody taking it. I don't care. All day, and I'm just getting better. Like, I I care to the point where it's like it, the name of the game: hit, don't get hit. I love Floyd, Ali, Roy Jones Jr. Big boxing fan. Maybe I, I think I got away from that with all the other love that I have for martial arts, jujitsu, and and all the grappling, and wrestling, and the tie, and the clinch. But good old boxing. And my boy Mike Davis just showed, man. So I'm man, bro. I will fight this whole stadium right now, bro. Anything else? That's good. Right. Yeah. Pretty Thank good, you, Mike. Thank you.